Hey guys, <laughs> Rachel here and I want to talk to you about something. I have just been absolutely loving these mid-century modern Scandinavian lights. The first one I want to talk about is this pendant light. And this is called the PH5 Pendant Light by Poole Henningsen in 1958, I believe. Now, when you take a look at this pendant light, it pretty much just looks like a bunch of plates and bowls all stacked together. And I feel like there's gotta be an easy DIY solve for this. The next light I wanna mention is this flower pot lamp. Now this is designed by Werner Panton in 1967. And apparently it was inspired by peace and love and the flower power era of the 60s. I love the aesthetic of both of these lights, but what I don't love so much is the price point. So I'm hopefully gonna DIY them for a lot less. Let's go. So I want to start with the flower pot light. I feel like it's going to be a bit more challenging. I have a loose plan for both of these lights, but stick around for the ride because like I said, they're loose. Earlier this morning, I stopped by Ikea because I noticed on their website they have these really great hemisphere dome shaped bowls and I'll show you what I got. So first I found this, and I believe this is called the Blanda Bowl. This one is eight inches in diameter and it was only $4.99 Canadian. So this is good for our top shade part. And then I found this bowl, and I thought this bowl would be really good for the base of our lamp. This is the Blanda Blank Bowl. This one is only five inches in diameter and I believe it was $3.99 Canadian. So we're off to a great start for our middle portion of the light and this is where we start to see the flower pot style coming in. So I actually found this at the thrift store. This is a globe glass vase and I always see a lot of vases in this style. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon if you don't see one secondhand. I literally found this for $1.99. Uh, it still has a tag on it because I think I was planning to put a cactus in here. That cactus has since passed away and how do you kill a cactus? Um, we don't have to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> also on my way home from Ikea, I stopped by the hardware store to get lamp components. I want both these lights to be fully legit functioning lights. So I grabbed these threaded rods and these are just typical for lamp making kits. I also grabbed a wire and a fixture, but we'll get to that stuff later. So the lamp's gonna sort of be something like threaded rod in our base, threaded rod goes through our glass, and then this sits on top and it's something like this. Can you see that? you see it coming together? Do you see something like this? You know? Okay, but let's start. Let's actually start. So the first thing I wanna do is actually be able to thread my rod into the bottom of this glass globe and into the top, or I guess bottom, of our aluminum bowl. So I'm gonna need to drill some holes and in order to drill into the glass, I'm going to go in with this carbide drill bit. So these drill bits are actually designed to effectively drill holes into glass without cracking, hopefully. <laughs> Please don't break my glass. That's why I have this, right? Anyway, and I just wanna make sure that I'm drilling this hole in the center of the bottom of my glass. The bit I'm using is 3 8 of an inch thick, which is the same thickness as my threaded rod. I just have my glass here on a silicone mat so it helps with any slipping. And you want to hold your drill perpendicular to the surface. So I added water to the top of my glass to help keep the surface cool as well as collect the glass dust. Now I encourage you to go really slowly with this step. You want to go slowly with your drill, keep a consistent light pressure as it slowly grinds away at the glass until you make it all the way through. Now I'm gonna do the same process on the bottom center of my aluminum bowl and instead of going in with a carbide drill bit, I'm just going in with a regular twist bit here. I'm also gonna drill a hole on the side of the bowl closer to the bottom so we can deal with some cable management later on. The hole on the side is a bit trickier so I'm gonna start off with a pilot hole on a scrap piece of wood before I go in with my bigger drill bit. Okay, so the base is looking great now. We're ready to start see the lamp sort of coming together. I'm gonna to take my threaded rod and I'm going to twist it through the hole at the top that we just made. Kinda of looks like a plunger. We'll get onto the glass in a little bit, but obviously when we put the two glass pieces on top, we're gonna to be fighting with the weight of the top versus the bottom. So I didn't twist this in all the way. I put it in 
to about like where the bottom of this hole on the side is. And I'm going to fill this bowl with concrete and hopefully it will be enough to weigh down the bottom. So to hold this rod in place temporarily, I'm going to put some washers on the top and at the bottom here. I'm just using this bag of quickcrete that I already had. The ratio I'm using is about two parts mixed to just under one part water. I'm looking for an oatmeal consistency. Now I'm gonna let this sit overnight to fully cure and harden, but it's looking good. Now we have our concrete carrying outside. I'm ready to start painting our glass pieces. Now I wanna paint the inside of these, so I'm going to tape on the outside. Ta-da! We got our bowl. Cool, all right, let's go paint. In a recent video, Becky made a mushroom style lamp and she found the best method for painting glass is to actually go in with spray paint and work in really thin layers, letting each layer dry in between. Okay, I feel like we're at a bit of a standstill with the lamp, so let's move on to our pendant light. And like I mentioned before, this pendant light just looks like a bunch of bowls and plates all stacked together. So another thing I picked up from Ikea this morning was this plug-in light fixture. And I'll show you what it looks like, basically this. And this is pretty much what we're going to build all of our bowls around. Now, I also already have this serving platter. I'm pretty sure I got this at the grocery store for like $6, but I never use it. And I also think it's a perfect starting piece for us, for you and I together to find the bowls that we need for this light. You get the gist? But I definitely need a lot more bowls, so in Sorry Girls fashion, I definitely wanna try and find secondhand bowls when I can. So let's go to the thrift store and see what we can find. Okay, so I definitely only want to use plastic bowls for this. I think it'll be a lot easier to drill holes into so they'll fit nicely on the fixture. And I think an important thing to mention here is just checking for things like scale as well as like ratio to one another, as well as the slopes of each plate and bowl. Okay, Whew. It's a hot Canadian summer. Why am I wearing jeans today? I will not be wearing jeans tomorrow. <laughs> so I ended up having to go to a couple different thrift stores, but I am happy with the bowls I did find. I am having trouble finding like the innermost smallest bowl. I am gonna go test my luck at the dollar store. And I think that's it for today. I'm gonna see you guys at the office tomorrow and we're gonna continue to work on these lights. I wore pants again. <laughs> I have my bowls that I found yesterday. Let me show you what I got. Maybe I'll do a loose stack just so you get a better idea. Something like this. In order for these to nicely fit around my fixture here, I'm gonna go in with a hole saw. I don't think that this thread is going to be wide enough for all of our bowls to stack upon it. So I'm gonna be using two different sizes as well. I'm gonna use a one three quarter inch so that it could fit around this threaded part. And then I'm gonna do another size that is two inches wide so it will nicely fit around the top part of this fixture. And this is which size I'm using on which bowls. So now I'm going to find center at the bottom of each one of my plates and then run it with the hole saw. Before using the hole saw, you wanna prep up your plate or bowl on a piece of scrap wood so the drill bit in the middle of the hole saw has something to catch onto. Similar to the carbide bit I used yesterday, I wanna go really slowly with my drill. Applying a constant and firm pressure, I let the bit take its time to grind away at the plastic and repeat this for all the bowls. Okay, all of our bowls have holes. Um, they look great. Some are definitely cleaner than others. For example, this bowl 
just started chipping away before I could do any real drilling, but it was fine because it had a score line, so I was able to just use pliers and crack away the excess. I'm not really concerned about things like this though because it's all gonna be sandwiched on our fixture, and speaking of, it's time to put them on. So this came in the fixture kit. I'm just gonna use it as a screw cap. Okay, you know what? I don't really love how this bowl and this plate are similar in depth, so I'm gonna add a little bumper. So I have this little wooden ring. I believe this is left over from some curtain rings that we have in the office. So this. Okay, yes! I think this is the vibe. To reinforce this whole thing, I'm actually just gonna add a little beads of hot glue between each plate just so that they kind of all stay together. <laughs> Look, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Last thing I really need to do is give this whole thing a coat of spray paint. I'm going in with this kind of deep, glossy cherry red and I think it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so the pendant light's drying. Let's go back to our flower pot lamp and see how that's doing. Uh, here's the base that we did yesterday. I mean, it's nice and heavy. Definitely feel good about this countering the weight of the glass on top. Take a look at the inside. So notice how I left a little bit of thread outside of the concrete. This is because I just wanna throw a washer and a nut on the end here to kind of keep it all held together. That feels good. Okay, so next I'm going to measure the length of this threaded rod so that I can figure out how long I want this piece of copper tubing to be that I'm going to put over top of this. And before I do that, I wanna take off this temporary nut that we had. Stand by. I'll get that later. Okay, just under 10 inches. I wanna leave about an inch extra of threaded rod at the top, maybe just under. So I'm going to cut down my copper to about nine inches. Next, I'm going in and I'm just gonna trim this down with my pipe cutter. To use a pipe cutter, all you have to do is tighten the blade all the way to your pipe and then alternate between twisting the pipe as well as tightening the blade and eventually it will snap off. Nice and clean. So the idea here is that this copper pipe will go over here and then our glass will come down and this copper pipe will actually be taking the weight of the top instead of having anything relying on this threaded rod. See that? Ooh, it's just slowly coming together, you know? Before I do anything else though, I'm going to give this piece and this piece a light sanding so we can prep it for spray painting that will happen later. We just want to create a more porous surface for the paint to hold on to. So now I wanna go in with some glue. I'm going in with some E6000. This is an industrial strength adhesive. It says, do not get on skin or clothing. Do not breathe. Keep out of reach of children. Use only in a well-ventilated area. So I'm gonna put some gloves and a mask on. So I'm only gonna put glue on the inside of this copper tube so I can glue it to the bottom. So this little piece came with the threaded rods and I just thought it might be nice. I don't know, this is so extra. If I could put it in here and just kind of make that a little bit cleaner because I maybe um, drilled the hole to be the same width as this piece. I maybe planned that early on. Maybe, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I did. After I let the E6000 glue set up for a little bit, I hit the base with some white primer paint, as well as going in with our lovely glossy yellow that we used yesterday. Okay, I really want that paint to dry fully before I start handling the base again, but let's take a look at our glassware. 
Okay, these look really good. And, oh, let's imagine it for a sec. Okay. Guys, it's so cute. So I want this glass top to be able to stand off of this a little bit, just to create a little bit more space between the glasses. My concern with using something like this, and this literally is like the inside of a tape roll, is that when the light's on, you're gonna see this ring in the glass, and I don't want that. So, I have an idea. <laughs> and I have this plastic container. I had some takeout in here. So same idea, but luckily this is clear and it has a clear top. So I'm gonna cut this in half, cut out the bottom hole so I can put it over top. Obviously you can definitely peel hot glue off of glass, but this, it still sticks really well. So unless you're really forcing it off, which no one should ever really be, I feel really good about this. Like, that's not going anywhere. And then I'm gonna glue this lid to here, and then I'm going to put a bead of glue inside the crevice. So the idea is that the glue is gonna act like a bumper, but it's also gonna help, it has a little hold to it, and then it will just sit on top of here. Okay, I am ready to wire this light, but let's go check on our base and see if it's dry. Yep, things are looking really good. It's time to actually make this function as an actual light. So I'm just gonna go in with a lighting cord as well as a fixture and I'm going to wire my own light. Now I've rewired a couple ceiling lights in my day so I feel pretty confident about basic electricity but if this is something that you want to try at home, I would just consult you know, any electrician or make sure you do your homework. So I'm actually going in with a chandelier bulb sized light fixture. I just think it will fit better inside the glass. Um, this package is open. It was the only one left, so I hope it still works. It does say I can put it on a portable lamp. Um, I will say though, the basic idea here is that I'm going to insert my cord into here and then I can put it through the base here. Oh yeah, here we go. See how I purposefully left some room at the bottom so that the cable can comfortably sit in there. So now I'm ready to put our shade over the threaded rod and this wire. Ooh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, definitely going to glue this glass to the copper rod, but first I'm going to add my fixture. Okay, before I screw this in or glue this down or anything, I just wanna see if this is working. I definitely need to go pick up an LED bulb um, because there's glass and paint and plastic here. You don't wanna use a regular bulb because it will get hot, but let's just see with this one. <gasps> with this, you can go boop, and it's gonna be like, ooh, and then we'll be like, ah, and it's like, yes. So let's turn this off. After I'm done fixing this, I think we're ready for my favorite part. I'm gonna go style both our lights and we can take a closer look. Oh, and I almost forgot. Earlier I filled half a wooden bead with wood filler and sanded that smooth, as well as gave it a coat of yellow so I could glue it to the top of the lamp to finish it off. Okay guys, honestly, I can't believe how well these lights turned out. If you do give either of these a try, make sure to share it with us and tag at the story girls. And if you enjoyed watching me make these today, definitely check out that video I mentioned earlier where Becky tried this mushroom lamp as well as a checkered rug. See you next time. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever spray painted something so perfectly in my life. <laughs> Um, I feel more gilded age than anyone at the Met Gala was.